Greetings, Apostles. This is Kim, host of Update Dispatch. Various PvE and PvP content awaits you in A3 weekly and daily. Different party and guild modes where multiple Apostles can fight together unlock as you become more and more powerful, adding new challenges and fun as you move forward in the game. Today we'll be taking a look at the newly added guild mode, the inter-server battlefield, Velengord Fortress. In addition to that, we have even more news, so be sure to stick around until the very end. The countless demons of Encaro's 13th invading force and their airborne stronghold, Velengort Fortress, stocked with innumerable black crystals, is attacking Mimethys through the rift in time and space. Adrasil has chosen the guilds within its strongest apostles in order to lay waste to Velengort Fortress. Velengort Fortress is an inter-server consolidated battlefield where the top guilds of each server come together to fight. The first two 8th ranked guilds on each server are placed in the 1st league and the 9th to 16th ranked guilds are placed in the 2nd league. Velengort Fortress comprises four fortresses and one fort heart. The apostles from each server will fight monsters in each other's assigned fortresses. There are mid-bosses in the four fortresses and server members will receive useful PvP damage increase and PvP damage reduction buffs based on their server's contribution until Valengort is over, so it's important to defeat the mid-bosses strategically. You can engage freely in PvP inside a Valengort fortress. You can earn PvP points by defeating other players and you can earn PvE damage increase buffs based on the total PvP points earned by your server. It's important to defeat the other players, but it's also important to stay alive to keep the other players from getting any stronger themselves. Ten minutes after entry, the Fort Heart will unlock and the final boss, First Demon Baal, will spawn beginning the Fort Heart boss round. The first and second place guilds on the server will enter the Fort Heart and engage in battle with Baal. Victory and defeat is determined by the contributions made to defeating Baal, and the server that has the most victories after three Fort Heart boss rounds will be the overall winner. There are a variety of prizes, including participation and victory rewards. All of the players in the first place server for Velengort Fortress will receive a world buff. They can also receive a separate, special reward and additional rewards based on the number of Fort Heart boss rounds won. All guild members who participated in Velengort Fortress can receive Fortress boss and Fort Heart boss rewards based on contribution. Two players from each guild are chosen as MVPs and will receive additional rewards. Too much to keep track of? Well, this is all you need to remember. You can get great item drops from Velengord Fortress. All you need to do is enter Velengord Fortress and hunt monsters. If the mid-boss spawns in the meantime, try to take it down. If you qualify for the battle, make sure to enter Velengord Fortress and help your server claim victory. Some new faces have been added to the roster of Soul Linkers. Are you ready to meet your new best friends? Introducing the three new Legendary Soul Linkers. Attack Type Noble Lady ER. The younger of the Rudamante twins, known associates of assassins and traders in black market deals. After their parents were murdered, her older sister Bennett became cursed while trying to protect her. ER had been training ever since, hoping to one day reunite with her older sister and take her revenge. The Attack Type ER's ultimate, I'll Tear You Apart, deals damage equal to a portion of her attack, silences targets, and decreases their movement speed. Her ultimate is optimized for PvP and RVR, and when used with her basic skill, Will It Rain Soon, which stuns targets for two seconds, you can disable your opponents for a long time. Support Type, Noble Lady Bennett. The elder of the Rudamante twins was cursed trying to protect her sister ER from thugs, but managed to seal the curse into her doll, Lonnie. She now travels with Emil, trying to find a way to undo the curse. Bennett's ultimate, Go Wild, increases the attack, max HP, and movement speed of up to 10 allies, making her a useful soul linker for PvE and RVR battles. Among her basic skills is Ready for a Scary Game, which increases your allies' attack, ACC, and crit success. Defense type, Lead Trooper Diana. 
Although born in a family of warriors, Diana has always had a weak constitution. After being healed by the Saintess, Princess Lunaris, she vows her allegiance to her savior and joins the troopers led by Tillis. After performing valiantly in the war against Shirku, she inherits the position of lead trooper. Diana's ultimate, I'll Take the Lead, decreases the defense of the Soul Linker for the duration, but increases her max HP and reflects a portion of the damage taken by the Summoner and Soul Linker. She withstands damage with the added HP instead of the decreased defense, and can reflect some of the damage back, making her useful in large-scale PvP battles. Your other companions, Shoes, will become a step more powerful. Shoe Transcendence is now available. You can transcend Shoes by going to Menu, Shoe, and then Transcend. A legendary shoe can be transcended using shoes of the same grade as material. With each transcendence, the shoe's max level increases by 5. A shoe can be transcended up to 3 times. Even if a shoe isn't at max level, they can be transcended. When an already transcended shoe is used as material for another shoe's transcendence, the original transcendence level is transferred. Also, upon transcending a shoe, a shoe's substats increase, and a transcended effect is added. For those apostles who may have felt that shoes were overshadowed by the soul linkers, we recommend traveling with more powerful shoes and seeing the difference. Have PK players been making it difficult to farm for equipment in the Warzone dungeon? The new Land of Peace will allow you to freely farm for equipment in peace. The Land of Peace is a location where PvP is disabled and you can hunt freely for high level equipment. Land of Peace is available for level 120 plus characters that have completed quest 16 through 50. You will need a Land of Peace entry ticket in order to gain entry. Entry tickets can be purchased from the shop with gold. One hour is recharged per ticket, and you can use up to eight a day. You can acquire level 140 equipment and various items from this update's Land of Peace, Somius of Peace, and the Blessed Land will be expanded in the future, so we hope you use it to your best ability. The limits of some content have been adjusted based on your growth. The Dark Lighthouse will be expanded. Floors 61 through 72 will be added, and they will yield accessories every four floors as usual. The Dark Lighthouse is not only a good source of EXP, gold, and magic stones, but also a good chance to check the recommended combat power of the newly opened levels in A3. Also, the Sanctuary's max level will be increased to level 65, and six-star Apostle Fragments will be added. There will be ways for Apostles who've reached the ceiling to still increase their combat power, so definitely manage your growth strategically. Every server's pride is on the line in Velengord Fortress. And even though it's hard to win and the entry requirements are steep, this top tier content will come with top tier rewards, so good luck to every apostle who enters this new battlefield. If you're already experienced with party and guild content, perhaps you'll defeat the boss in Velengord Fortress. And don't forget to increase your combat power with the new soul anchors and transcended shoes. I'll be sure to be back next time with even more exciting updates. Make sure to like and subscribe to get more A3 news and stories.